office. So, yes, looking forward to that. <clears throat> we continue our sermon series on Joseph, like Isaac mentioned at the beginning. Now, how many of you have played with dominoes before? Okay, not played the game dominoes, <laughs> but played with dominoes, right? As a kid, I used, to, I used to love playing with that, especially lining them up and then at the end, you know, just bumping that last domino and then just watching all of it fall. Now, it's pretty exciting, but it was very frustrating in the beginning when you would be almost halfway through or almost towards the end, and then, oops, there's an accident, and then what happens? <laughs> they all fall, and then you have to restart all over again. Now, back then, I didn't have YouTube, right? Yes, I'm that old. There was no YouTube, and so there was no, you know, tips or suggestions as to what to do to avoid that. I figured later, right, that you can leave, oh, there's a picture there, that you can leave a gap, right, along the way so that if an accident were to happen, it would fall, but then it wouldn't make the rest of it fall. So I was like, oh, well, that's cool. And I realized, man, sometimes life can be just like those dominoes falling one after another. And I know many of you are pretty familiar with that, and you wish, right, <clears throat> that there would be a gap where it would just stop. But sometimes it just feels like life is hitting you, boom, 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 one after another. And the dominoes keep falling and falling and falling. And you start thinking to yourself, when is this going to end? When can I catch a break? I wish there was that gap in that series of dominoes falling where I can just like, oh, okay, it stopped. Not everything is down. There's a little bit that I, that, you know, there's still standing that I can start from again. Sometimes life doesn't let you do that. And you just see it falling and falling and falling. The things you've built, the things you cherish, the things you've achieved, the life that you've built all seem to fall like this domino, this domino effect. And the dominoes just keep falling for Joseph's life too. We ended with Joseph being falsely accused of trying to sleep with Potiphar's wife, and he did the right thing. He fled from that place because he knew this was trouble. But what did that do? Nothing good. It just got him into more trouble. But like we said last time, I'd rather you suffer the consequences for doing right, right, than for taking the wrong choice. And so he did take the right choice. Now Joseph, who is probably in his <clears throat> mid-20s, we would say, right, ends up in jail. Most likely in some dungeon, right, some cave or just some very cold, unpleasant place, right? You don't want to be as good as they probably serve it to you in jail these days. You just don't want to be in that place. And he's framed, right, and he has no one in his favor. He's got no one to help his case, right? There's no witness. There's no one that says, no, I saw that Joseph is innocent. No. Um, the only one that's pretty much standing up for Joseph is God. And sometimes that's all you need. So listen to this in Genesis chapter 39, verses 20 through 23. It begins by saying, Joseph's master took him and threw him in jail, the place where the king's prisoners were held. While he was in jail, the Lord was with Joseph and remained loyal to him. He caused the jail's commander to think highly of Joseph. The jail's commander put all of the prisoners in the jail under Joseph's supervision. And he was the one who determined everything that happened there. The jail's commander paid no attention to anything under Joseph's supervision because the Lord was with him and made everything he did successful. Sound familiar? Very familiar, right? To the context of him being a servant of Potiphar and then God blessing even in Joseph's servitude, right? Where Potiphar put everything in his hand. And and. You see this again. And this is a man who has displayed resilience, right? Because if I'm in that situation, right, I've been loyal to this master, I've been loyal to God, and here I am in jail, I would probably just throw the towel and say, yeah, forget this. But here's Joseph again saying, okay, I'm in here. I can't change this context, but I can have control of what I do and the attitude I take and what I choose to do with that. 
He's got every right to be angry. He's got every right to be vengeful. He's got every right to be bitter for where he's at after all that loyalty that he's displayed. But he understands this very important foundation that God is not bailing on Joseph. And Joseph is not bailing on God either. When it all seems to go wrong for Joseph, Joseph continues to serve God and honor God. And that's very important. When it all seems to go wrong, Joseph has one answer. I will continue to serve God, and I will continue to honor God. Now, that's easier said than done, right? Joseph knows that this is, this is the one thing that he can have control, right? There's nothing he can control about his present situation. He can't all of a sudden just, you know, because of his power in, his jail, in, in the jail, right, say, okay, you know, I've done so much, uh, so now I can, you know, use my get-out-of-jail card, right? No, I'm sorry, that doesn't change any of that. He's still in there, probably thinking indefinitely, right? We know the story, but he's, for as long as he knows, he's probably here until something happens, until God acts. And that's a very tough situation to be in. And there's not much he can do. But Joseph focuses on what he can control and begins to honor God. Cleaning, organizing, volunteering, supervising. I know this jail is not the best place I want to be in. But there are some things that I can do. And if I get to do it, I'll do it in a way that it honors God. He did it in such a faithful manner that even in prison, everything Joseph did for God, God made it successful. Even in prison. It wasn't about changing his circumstance as some people might want and wish. It was about changing his mindset that God remains in control. Yet, even in prison, God remains in control. Sometimes we think, right, that God is out there trying to change constantly our circumstances, but often that's not the case. I wish circumstances were different from my parents, right? My parents are now caregivers of my youngest brother for over 28 years. And trust and believe, I've been praying, God, when are you going to change that circumstance? When are they going to catch a break? Like, how long must they do this? Isn't 28 years enough? Can't you change that circumstance for them? Can't they have a little bit of freedom? But sometimes changing the circumstance is not always a plan, but changing the mindset of how you live within that circumstance. And there is one thing that I can always say is that my faithfulness unto God, my loyalty unto God has been deeply influenced by their faithfulness, by their 28 years of faithfulness, despite the fact that circumstances haven't changed, they still choose to honor God and to serve God. And that means a lot. And it means a lot to those who watch you. It means a lot to those who see you. It's not like God has some restricted areas, right, where God says, yeah, sorry, I can't change that circumstance, or sorry, that's beyond my power. No, there's places where trust and believe God is at work in many unexpected places. But this we have to understand. When it all goes wrong, God still remains in control. Life, yes, can hit us hard. On top of everything, I know for many of us, right, in the past couple of years, it almost seems like longer than that, we've been hit, right, with this pandemic that has altered life, has changed life. And for many of us, um, the circumstances had raised different challenges. Many of us had to do life within the boundaries of home, right? <laughs> There's one thing I learned during that time where I, you know, we were just home all the time. It was just, even the menial tasks, right, of washing dishes and doing it time after time or cooking or doing laundry, like, it became very frustrating to, you know, be honest. Um, but it came to this point where I, okay, I can't change this. I mean, it's going to have to get done no matter what, right? What I can change is how I approach this task. I can't change my outside circumstance. I can't just say all of a sudden, you know, all of this go away, please, in the name of Jesus. It's still here. And so, but there are some things that I can't control. 
And so I begin to honor God and serve God even in that menial task of washing dishes. I can wash dishes and pray. I can wash dishes and sing. I can wash dishes with a positive attitude, right? I'll do it for you, God, even if it means sweeping. And so Joseph continues to honor God, probably talking to God every day, right? Because this is a man who understands where his faith is in. And so I imagine Joseph every day, um, if they had a broom, he would have a broom, and he would be sweeping and saying, God, remember that dream that you gave me one day? Anytime soon would be good, right? And so he just continues to sweep. Um, and then God says, yeah, not today. Okay, God, uh, I'll still sweep. I'll still do what I'm given in this prison. And he continues to sweep, and he says, probably singing, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. No, there was no song back then, but praising God. You have to understand that it didn't change his loyalty unto God. It didn't change the heart of, to honor and serve God, even if that meant months or weeks or years. He still did the same thing to honor and serve God. Later, of course, we read that Pharaoh's wine taster and baker go to prison because they did something that offended Pharaoh. And you start thinking, well, what could a baker and wine taster do to offend Pharaoh? But there they are. And Joseph is put in charge over these two when one night both of them have dreams. And Joseph can tell that these guys are disturbed because this wasn't just any ordinary dream and they're just scratching their head. And so Joseph approaches them and says, I know, I see that there's something wrong with you. Uh, what's going on? Well, we've had this dream and we don't understand. So Joseph interprets the dream of the wine taster. And it goes something like this in Genesis chapter 40, verses 8 through 15. It says, Joseph said to them, Don't interpretations belong to God? Describe your dreams to me. So the chief wine steward described his dream to Joseph. In my dream, there was a vine right in front of me, and on the vine were three branches. When it budded, its blossoms appeared, and its clusters ripened into grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, so I took the grapes, crushed them in, into Pharaoh's cup, and put the cup in Pharaoh's hand. Joseph said to him, this is the dream interpretation. The three branches are three days. After three days, Pharaoh will give you an audience and return you to your position. You will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand just the way things were before when you were his wine steward. But please remember when you are doing well and be loyal to me. Put in a good word for me to Pharaoh so he sets me free from this prison. I was stolen from the land of the Hebrews and here too I've done nothing to be thrown into this dungeon. Joseph is desperate. He wants to get out. This is not where he wants to be or spend the rest of his life. So Joseph, later on in that chapter, interprets also the baker's dream. But the baker's dream has a different fate, right? For him, it ends bad. Um, he dies, right? So Joseph, even though he's in this position of power, he's absolutely got nothing he can do to change his circumstance. And sure enough, his dreams do come true, right? In Genesis 40, verse 20 through 23, we read, it says, The third day was Pharaoh's birthday. Exactly how he said, three days later. And he gave a party for all his servants. Before all of his servants, he gave an audience to the chief wine steward and the chief baker. He returned the chief wine steward to his position, and he placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. But the chief baker he hanged, just as Joseph had said would happen when he interpreted their dreams for them. But the chief wine steward didn't remember Joseph. He forgot all about him. So what happens to those dominoes? They just keep falling one after another. That was his hope. That was like, man, okay, maybe this is my ticket out. Finally, God, is this like your way of getting out of here? <clears throat> Meanwhile, Joseph hangs on to that hope, hoping that this wine taster will remember. And he's sweeping again, right? Every day probably. And saying, anytime soon, I should be out of here. Anytime soon. But if you read the next chapter, you know what that soon meant? Two years. Two years, right? 
deep in Joseph's heart, there's a foundation that keeps him serving and honoring God, even in that context. And you know what it is? It's this truth that God remains in control. God always remains in control. And this is vital for our faith. There may be days when you are walking in that valley, and that valley seems to be getting darker and darker for you. But you continue to walk. Why? Because you know wholeheartedly that God remains in control and God is with you. There may be days in your life when you just climb that mountain and you're proud of yourself and you're glorifying God and saying, God finally made it to the top of this hard mountain. And then as you open your eyes and see beyond, you see 10 more mountains. And you say, oh, man, how many more mountains do I have to climb? But you keep climbing because you know that God remains in control and God is with you. There may be days when just one door after another closes right in front of you. Sometimes they just slam it right in front of you. And you say, oh, man, how many more doors do I have to see closed in my life? But you keep knocking. Why? Because God remains in control. God is with me. When it all seems to go wrong, God remains in control. It shouldn't be an excuse. A lot of times we do this, but it shouldn't be an excuse to bail on God and show disloyalty to a God who never ceases to be loyal to you. But it's often easy to do that. Oh, see, God, you didn't do what I said. You, you didn't do what I asked you, or you didn't keep your side of the promise. So uh, you know what? Okay, I'm not going to do what you say, or I'm not going to live like you asked me to live. I'm going to rebel because you didn't do according to my plans. That's not what that relationship really should look like. It should be an opportunity to explore our faith, to deepen our faith with deeper roots and know that God remains in control because trust and believe you stick long enough in that relationship and God's not going to fail in his faithfulness to you. Never. And this scenario is painted time after time in Scripture through different people. And through my life, right, if you have coffee with me, I can tell you time after time how many times God has displayed his faithfulness. And time after time, they're called to do the same thing, to know that God remains in control. We know that this seems impossible to you guys, but trust and believe God remains in control. Okay, God, here we go. We know that this seems just like it can never be accomplished. But trust and believe God remains in control. Keep walking. Psalm 46, verse 10, I want to end with this verse. <clears throat> it says it this way, To those who see chaos every day, who see disorder, who see a, word, a world falling apart and divided, who see pain after pain, who see valley after valley, who see mountain after mountain, who see... Doors closed after doors closed. Even in those moments, even in those situations, this is a promise from God. And he says, hey, I know what you see. And he says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. We're talking about a God as Isaac said from the beginning, right, who has overcome the world already for us. So be still and just know that I am God. He remains in charge. He remains in control. And he is with you. Circumstances may have taken some choices away from you in life. Circumstances may have given you no choice in life but to just be there. Or you've come to a place where you've got no control of what's going on around you. But you still have control over this one thing. To honor God and to serve Him with what you have before you. And if prayer is the only thing that you have left to do, we honor and serve God in prayer. If praise is the only thing left that you've got to do, then we Praise and honor God. And if being still is the only thing that you've got left to do, 
then we just stay still in the presence of God because we know that God remains in control. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for giving us just this wonderful hope, Father, and this wonderful rock as a foundation, Lord God, that no matter what happens to our lives, no matter how many valleys we have to go through in life, no matter how many mountains we have to climb, no matter how many doors we see shut before us, Lord God, you are a God who remains in control, not only of our own lives, our future, our eternity, but it goes beyond that you're in control of this world. Sometimes we don't understand the sovereignty. Sometimes we don't understand why our circumstances don't change. Why 28 years like this? Or why 50 years like this? Or why 40 years like this? But you're a God who can change the circumstances within our own heart to be able to thrive and to be able to honor you and serve you and see that you are in our midst, that you favor us, even in those unchangeable circumstances that we are placed in. Father, help us how to shine. Help us how to thrive. Help us how to keep walking in those circumstances that we're currently walking in and that we have no control in changing, Lord God, but we can change how we serve you and honor you. So we ask by the power of the Holy Spirit that you lead our hearts and our minds and just our spirit into that. And ask that you teach us, Lord God, to honor you like Joseph did and to serve you regardless of the circumstances around us and to do it faithfully because you are a God who remains in control and you are a God who will see us through and pull us through, as you've done time after time. And so we praise you for that, Lord God. And we ask and we pray with faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and sing together to the Lamb who was slain, who is worthy to receive power and wisdom and riches and strength and glory and honor and blessing for what he has already accomplished. Let's sing it out. joining us and has I blessed you this week I simply blessed you with the stillness that comes from knowing God who is in control and may he give you victory to overcome anything and everything that robs that peace from your heart may you find joy in the presence of our God who is faithful to us every day so may you be blessed and have a wonderful week. I'll see you next week.